Hi, this is Scott. Welcome to the Tall Woodworker. In this video, I'm going to make a bit of a change and build something for my cats. We're going to build a scratching post. Stick around, I'll show you how I do it. So, my wife and I actually have three cats. Zoe, Spooky, and Taco. Uh, we named them Taco because Taco Cat spelled backwards is Taco Cat. Yeah, I know. We're geeky. Deal with it. So Taco likes to scratch on my fairly new chair in the living room, especially when he wants some food. So we thought it'd be really nice to put a scratching post right where he likes to scratch to, you know, get our attention. But we also didn't want to do your typical go to the store and buy one and have it stand out like a sore thumb. So we kind of had a bit of an idea to make one, and that's what we're going to do in this video. So I've kind of already got the design mocked up. It's not done. This isn't going to be a five second video at all. Um, but basically what we're going to be doing is grabbing a couple of two by fours that I've laminated together and I've already ran these through my planer. That's why they're nice and square. If you happen to be able to find a non pressure treated four by four, that might even be better because you can get a slightly bigger diameter on a four by four since that's three and a half by three and a half. Whereas if you do two two by fours, the most you'll get is three by three. I'm going to be using a, an edge glued uh, circle cut board for the base of it. And we're going to actually mount this off center. I had an idea where I'm going to cut a hole where the foot of the chair will actually rest in. And that'll prevent this thing from tipping over. Although, honestly, with this big of a diameter, if he can topple this over, he's a strong cat. And then, of course, every cat loves to scratch on some sisal rope. And this is just stuff you can buy at the hardware store, and there's nothing fancy about this. But again, if I were just to use this, this is going to stand out like a sore thumb. So we're going to actually run this in a water bath and dye it. Not this type of dye it, like change its color type of dye it. And of course, what project wouldn't be finished without some sort of unnecessary walnut that we're going to use to cap the entire thing? So most of the work is going to be done on the center post. As you can see, these are very square. You can also see I have found the center point of this square. I want it to be round. I don't want this to have those edges. So we're going to use the lathe to turn these down. However, because my lathe is small in capacity, I can't just turn the two feet that I need all in one sitting. So we're going to have to do it twice. Yeah, let's get the... Uh, the rope in the dye bath and the boards on the lathe. I pour the dye into a bath of hot water and stir it up a bit. Then I go ahead and insert the rope into the bath and I soak it for I think about two hours. Once it's nice and soaked I can remove the rope and then I lay it out to dry in my workshop. Let's get started on the center column. I mount the posts between centers on the lathe. I then use a combination of tools to get this down to as close to a cylinder as I possibly can. I'm not exactly looking for perfection. It's gonna be wrapped up in rope anyway but I want to try to get this down to at least a straight cylinder if I can. Here you can see me from another angle as I finish off the upper column. I use a combination of the round head and square head scrapers as I do this cut. The 
a bit of sanding with an 80 grit sanding disc and that makes these columns really smooth. At the table saw, I square off one end of the columns, then I measure out about the length I'm going to need, which in this case is about 11 inches. Cut both of these up, and I'm ready to move on. I mark the center point of both columns and use a punch to indent the center. I can then use this drill block to drill in a hole then I'm going to use some threaded inserts, and you'll see why in just a bit. The main part of this is going to be held together with glue. This is going to be plenty strong enough. But in order to get the proper clamping strength, I use the threaded inserts and a small threaded rod. This way I can actually screw them into each other to tighten, and you can see all that nice glue squeeze out. I hold it together with some masking tape and wait for it to dry. Once that's good and dry, I can go ahead and stain it. And you might have seen Mrs. Tall Woodworker there. She was headed out somewhere and wanted to give me a kiss goodbye. Isn't she sweet? Originally, I was going to paint this column, but I thought stain would be better, that way nothing can flake off if the cats scratch too far into it. Here I'm using a pair of dividers to scratch a circle into the piece of walnut that we'll use to cap it off. I've already got the threaded insert in there, and you'll see me attach it later. This notch you see me cutting out is going to inset into where the arm of the chair is. This way I can get the scratching post as close to the chair as possible. This tool I'm using, you might have seen in some other videos, is a Rockwell Blade Runner. It's basically a jigsaw mounted upside down. It does the job since, well, I still don't have a bandsaw. I can take the walnut disc over to a strip sander to clean off the edges and make it nice and smooth. And now I'll use a palm sander to put a round over on the edge of the walnut disc. Once the stain is dry, it's time to wrap it with the sisal rope. What I'm doing here is cutting a V-groove, and this is going to allow me a place to start the rope in. I use a flush trim saw, just because it's easy for me to use here, and then a chisel to knock out some of this area. I can then lay in the rope using a bit of wood glue to hold it in place and put a couple of staples in there as well for good measure, and that'll hold it in perfectly while I wrap it. Sorry about the funky camera angle here, but I use another threaded insert on the top to mount the circle disc on the top of this thing. I don't use any glue, this way if I need to rewrap, I can easily take that off. Now this is really important. Do not use any metal fasteners to hold this in place. Remember, your cat's going to be scratching on this, and they probably don't want their claws to hit the metal fasteners. I'm only using hot glue to hold the rope onto the post. When hot glue hardens, it still is pliable enough that if they get their claws caught on it, it's not going to hurt them at all. I would not use any staples if there's any chance they might get a hold of that with their claws.
The foot of the chair that this is going to go next to has a triangular base to it. So I drew that out on the base and then drilled some holes out for some relief cuts. Then took a jigsaw to it to open up the hole. Once I was sure the hole was big enough to fit underneath the chair, it was time to wrap it in a fairly nice carpet that I found at my local hardware store. Now, I am not a master upholsterer here. I basically just flubbed my way through this whole thing, just stretching it all the way around the disc and shooting some staples through here. I'm sure there are way better ways to do this, but honestly, when I was done, I was happy with the results. Once the carpet was secure, I cut away all the excess with a hobby knife, and then I cut the hole for the foot to go through and tack that in place as well. Now I can send a screw through and know exactly where the post is gonna go. So I just did a uh test fit of this and it works perfectly and uh, the word from Mrs. Tall Woodworker is wow <laughs> she really likes it so just gonna put in a few more screws to hold this in place then we'll put some finish on the wall I secure the post in place with three more screws these four screws should be more than enough to hold it in place and now Time for the gratuitous, slow motion, Odie's Oil finish shot. Oh yeah! And so here's the final scratching post. Uh, it fits really nicely up against the chair here. And after a couple weeks of it being here, I can tell you Taco actually uses the scratching post. He no longer scratches the chair. So mission accomplished, which is strange because most of the time cats don't like to use the things that you get for them, do they? But he does use this and I'm really happy with it. Now I apologize for not releasing this video on time. I'm about a week late in posting the video. My wife and I did spend some time out of town. Bonus points if you can figure out where we went. But I do hope to be back on the every other week release cycle now that we're back. I got a couple of projects in my head. Uh, hopefully I can translate them from in my head to reality. So be sure to stick around for those. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to comment on what you like about it or what you might want to change about this design. I've been really happy with it and uh, yeah, I'm really glad that I built this for him. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and until next time, thanks for joining me in my living room and in my shop too.